The NCDOT 2018 standard specifications for roads and structures revises the requirements for post-tensioning jacks used on cord slabs and box beams. Section 430-6 states, position the jack and tension along the same axis as the strand. Utilize a double acting jack which tensions the strand and properly seats the wedges after achieving tension. This is a typical jack meeting the requirements of the specification. Later we will see how the nose of the jack rests on the collar, allowing the jack to tension along the strand axis. This clip shows the underside of the jack. Notice the puller grips here that grip the strands during tensioning. Also notice the power seater. At the end of the stroke, before the pressure is released, this seats the wedges properly in the collar. These paint marks are used later to determine the stroke of the jack. When the jack is fully retracted, they are just visible. The gauge and jacks must be calibrated together within the past 12 months. The contractor should have a letter such as this showing the calibration date. The contractor should also have a chart showing gauge pressures and corresponding forces exerted by the jack. The specifications call for strands on cord slabs and box beams to be tensioned to 43,950 pounds. This chart shows the gauge should read between 5520 and 5540 PSI to achieve the required tension. The nose of the jack bears on the collar during the jacking process. This allows the jack to load the strand axially as required by the specifications without having to use a reaction frame. The wedge diameter is smaller than the opening of the jack nose, which prevents the wedges from being engaged until the power seater seats the wedges at the end of the stroke. Before installing the hardware and tensioning the strand, remove the polyethylene sheet on the exposed end of the strand and clean the strand of all grease and oil. While not required by the specifications, it is wise to leave a sufficient length of strand exposed on the dead end to set the jack up on if it became necessary. Before tensioning, the dead end must also be cleaned and a washer, collar, and wedge installed. The wedge must also be seated on the dead end before tensioning the live end. This can easily be done with a 3 quarter inch inside diameter pipe section slid over the strand to hammer the wedges into the collar. Also before tensioning, the maximum stroke of the jack should be recorded. If the strand elongates more than the maximum stroke, the gauge may show a deceptively high reading. Checking that the stroke is not at the maximum after achieving the prescribed pressure reading on the gauge verifies that the reading is accurate. This can be done by extending the jack to the maximum stroke and either measuring from the end of the jack to the paint marks or the exposed cylinder to the paint marks. Plate, collar, and wedges can now be installed. The nose of the jack is placed on the collar and the strand fitted through the jack. This lever helps seat the strand grips on the strand. With the jack properly seated, the pump is now pressurized to the proper reading, which in this case is 5,520 pounds per square inch. The stroke is also checked to ensure that it hasn't exceeded the maximum stroke. You should now wait two minutes and check the gauge again to ensure there is no pressure drop. The jack can now be released and moved to the next location. Strands should never be flame cut, especially when being cut to the final length. The cutoff saw or grinder should be used so as not to damage the strand or hardware with excessively high temperatures.